Hey, good morning, everybody. It is five minutes past the hour, so let's kick off. Thank you very much, everyone, for joining us today and welcome to the Platforms for Open Data Showcase. My name is Alicia Brown and I'm from Data61's Product and Design Group and I'll be leading you through today. Today, in our post-COVID new normal, we're coming to you live from all around the country. And I sit here and speak to you from Brisbane and we recognise the traditional owners of the land here, the Yagara people. I'd like to acknowledge their deep and enduring commitment to the country and pay my respects to their past elders, past, present and emerging. And that respect extends to all the locations of which we're dialed on from today. I believe we also have a number of friends who have dialed in from New Zealand joining us today. And to you, my friends, I say tenakoto, tenakoto, tenakoto katoa. Now we have a lot to get through today in our short time together of only one and a half hours. So first I'll just start with some conduct and some how to's. For those of you who have dialed in as participants, you'll be automatically play, placed on mute. Um, however, for all of our panelists, um, while you aren't speaking, if you could just please uh, be on mute so we can make sure everyone can hear the great conversation happening. Though while you will be on mute, uh, we are today very interactive and there's several ways that you can get involved. If you look down to the bottom right of your screen, you'll see a chat function where you can speak to not only the panelists, but also everyone here today. Um, so please do get chatty and share your thoughts as we go through today. If you, however, want to pose any particular questions to the panelists while we're running today's session, there is a separate ask a question Q&A function in the middle of your screen, which you can use. And I will be trying to make sure we get those, through those questions as best we can. And last but not least, we will be recording the session. So if you are escaping the heat, this heat wave today by wearing your best newsreader outfit, you have been warned. Now with the housekeeping out of the way, why are we all here? Well, we're here to celebrate the achievements and reflect on the platforms for open data program, better known as PFOD. Over the years, PFOD has been a vehicle in which government has been able to run innovative experiments in relative safely and co-create some of the most progressive approaches to how we solve access to data, sharing data and using that data. Today, rather than a showcase filled with technology demonstrations to talk you through the amazing 12 projects of the last year, we will instead have a series of discussions with a smaller cohort of PFOD collaborators who share with you, our lovely audience, their views on the challenges they faced, the lessons they learned and the opportunity for the future. And the timing of these insights could not be more fitting as never before has the power of data and digital technologies had such a profound influence on our everyday lives. To kick off today, we have two incredibly smart and very influential people to share their thoughts on the innovation journey. First up, we have Andrew Lawler, the Assistant Secretary of Data and Digital from Prime Minister and Cabinet. And Andrew is the Commonwealth Lead on data, um, Public Data Policy and his team coordinates many of the mechanisms bringing Commonwealth agencies together to improve data use. Following Andrew, we'll also have John Whittle, who is the director of CSIRO's Data61. John leads one of the largest collections of R&D expertise in artificial intelligence and data science in the world. And he is passionate about the role digital technologies can play in society today. Andrew, get ready with that unmute button and over to you to start us off. Right. Thanks, Alicia. Um, and let me also acknowledge the traditional custodians. And for me, that is the Ngunnawal people. Um, I'm pretty sure that I'm not saying anything that people don't know on this call, but um, it's very clear that um, public sector data is a very significant national asset. And in the hands of the Australian public sector, it can drive better policies and services. Um, and in the hands of others, it can lead to new insights and the development of innovative solutions to all sorts of problems and opportunities. And it has been a year of needing to grapple with all sorts of um, problems and opportunities. And let me assure you, the Prime Minister and his cabinet are very keen to bring um, significant data to the very big decisions they've had to make this year. And it's not surprising then that the government really does expect us to continue advancing the access sharing and use of data. So the government's data policy settings are set out in the 2015 public data policy statement. And this commits agencies to a range of actions to improve the use and reuse of public sector data, including making non-sensitive data open by default, 
and improving data sharing between Australian government entities. Uh, sometimes that sounds easier to do than putting it into practice. But nevertheless, the statement has driven a fair bit of cultural change across the APS, improving open data efforts and helping to mature conversations around the use of data in government. And just one example of that is the tremendous growth in um, data that is now open through the government's open data portal, data.gov.au, which is, now has around 90,000 data, data sets there, up from around 500 in 2013. Uh, moving on, and uh, the Office of the National Data Commissioner has been established in response to a 2017 Productivity Commission inquiry into data availability and use with a mandate to drive change and support best practice in data sharing and use across the public sector through a new data sharing framework. And the need for open and accessible data um, has never been more crucial uh, as highlighted um, for example, through the bushfires over 2019-20. And just recently, the Royal Commission into Natural Disaster Arrangements has put forward a number of recommendations around the need for nationally consistent, open and accessible data platforms. And these recommendations include the need for consistent data standards to measure disaster impacts and greater capacity to collect and share comprehensive national disaster impact data. The COVID-19 pandemic has also highlighted the need for accessible data, both for health and economic response and recovery. And it's clear, very clear, that um, greater sharing of government data would have enabled uh, responding agencies to more easily address and assess COVID hotspots, improve, improve contact tracing for COVID-19, and to better support vulnerable Australians throughout the pandemic. And looking at these and countless other um, data activities across government, we you know, observe many wonderful uses of data, but also arrangements where um, we see that uh, data is not being used to its full potential. And quite often we see that uh, agencies are being held back by at least one of five systemic barriers. First, where legislation hinders data use and sharing where capability holds an agency back from delivering decisions, policy services. Uh, third, where culture um, means that data isn't treated with the same degree of strategy, resourcing and ongoing management as any other key asset. Fourth, where agencies have not been able to earn public trust in how they hold, use or share data or that lack of trust holds them back from doing innovative things. And fifth, where technical barriers prevent optimal data use. And I'm sure many people who've joined us today will know that data is just simply not going to neatly arrange itself, make itself available appropriately without some kind of technical help. So going back a few years, the Platforms for Open Data initiative was established under the um, National Innovation and Science Agenda. It's part of the government's aim to make public sector data more accessible and usable and gave agencies a safe space for innovation and experimentation, taking a co-designed approach um, uh, to research to enable greater use and impact from government data. And referring back to those systemic barriers I was mentioning, you can see the need for it. So I'll hand over to John now to give us a bit more detail about the PFOD program and what the program has achieved over the last couple of years. And thanks for having me. Great, thank you, Andrew. Um, look, it's great to be here, everybody, and it's wonderful to see so many participants today. Um, so as um, Alicia said, my name is John Whittle. I'm the director of CSIRO's Data 61. And it's my great pleasure just to tell you a little bit more about the PFOD or Platform for Open Data um, program, which we're gonna see some highlights of here today. So as Andrew said, you know, the PFOD program dates back to July 2016. It was part of the National Innovation and Science Agenda from the Australian government. Um, and it was really about how Australian government can improve the way that it uses, reuses and releases government held data. But for me, I, I guess the, the kind of standout aspect of the PFOD program, as much as the technologies that were developed themselves, is really the way that it fostered collaboration between 
a number of government agencies and Data61 itself. And Data61 um, is, a, is a large organization of about 500 full-time staff, all working in AI, data science, and other related areas such as cybersecurity. And so it was a really exciting opportunity to bring that kind of expertise together with the expertise from various different agencies that really understood how the government needed to and wanted to use data um, on a day-to-day -day basis to help the government's agenda. So how did the program work? Well, it provided seed funding to a number of projects and there were really some characteristics of these projects. So they were meant to be not just business as usual, but they were meant to be transformative projects that really could provide high value um, to those government agencies. And it really provided, as Andrew said, a safe space for innovation. So by bringing together um, you know, Data61 with government agencies, you know, we could do things that you, you know, that, that uh, you know, not one of those organizations could do by themselves. There was a competitive process for deciding on the projects and that uh, those decisions were made from a committee of senior executives from both Data61 as well as the government agencies. And the projects were funded along three themes. So open data discovery and access, protecting sensitive data and enabling data use, which is really more about how do you make data more accessible and don't require those deep data science skills to get the value out of those data. And as I said, it was really um, a unique collaboration of um, expertise in which both of the parties, Data61 and the relevant agency, really brought something to the table in a symbiotic way, I would say. So Data61 bringing its data science and software engineering expertise, but the agencies bringing you know, their support for exploring technologies that would take them beyond business as usual, and also finding pathways for the longer term adoption of those technologies into their agencies. So there was, there's been a number of showcases as part of the PFOD program over the years. Um, six rounds of projects were funded. In total, over 650 government staff attended those showcases and around 40 government agencies. Today is the final showcase, so both a celebratory moment, but also a rather sad moment at the same time, um, where we, we really kind of look back and reflect um, and celebrate all the successes that the program achieved. And certainly for, for, from my perspective, although I wasn't um, at Data61 at the beginning of the program, I've had an opportunity to kind of reflect on what the programs achieved. Um, as has already been mentioned, um, we've never been in a time, perhaps in our history, when the role of data and the need to share data is so important. We've seen that in you know, very stark light with the COVID-19 um, epidemic, where data and sharing data was really critical in, in fighting um, that pandemic, um, and also in the economic recovery related to that. And very pleased to say that, you know, some of the technologies that were developed under PFOD, such as the Magda platform, which underpins data.gov.au, contributed to those efforts. And in particular, related to that pandemic and the, the data aspect of that pandemic, you know, the, the thing that um, excites me about the role of data in the pandemic is that the, the role of data has really been elevated in the public eye in a way that perhaps it never has been before. We will all remember in the early days of the pandemic, going on to the Johns Hopkins sites, looking up daily case numbers, Suddenly, we were, all, we were all talking about R numbers and flattening the curve, and we had a whole new vocabulary and terminology that we'd never used before. And I really hope that that has inspired a new generation of data scientists, because we've got young people and kids out there in our country right now who have been following that and have got really excited by all those graphs and, and all the predictions and the way that mathematics and statistics and computer science has been used. So I'm, I'm really hoping that in the coming years and decades, we'll see a burgeoning new class of data scientists that can then be brought to bear on some of the data sharing issues that the government has. 
It's also interesting to reflect where we are in our journey to release open data. So 2020 actually marks 10 years since the launch of the first open data catalogs in Australia. That time was marked by you know, a sense of early enthusiasm and various policies, policies that um, promoted open data. Um, and, and, but there's a long way to go, I think it, it's still uh, safe to say. And I think the role that the PFOD program has played in that is that it's really helped agencies mature in their thinking and in the way they use technologies. Um, and as I said, it's really um, been a good example of that collaboration between you know, the kind of techies from Data61 and the government agencies. And in particular, I think one of the unique aspects of the program is it really took what we call a platform approach. So it wasn't just about developing a specific technology to solve a specific problem but we were really looking for areas where that specific problem could be generalized so that it had a broader application, not just in the government agency where it was developed, but also in other government agencies and possibly even more widely. And I think we'll see some good examples of that today. And then finally, the final point that I want to make is if you look at where we are in the technology world today, things have moved on since 2016. Um, when PFOD was started. The hot topic of today, of course, in the technology world is artificial intelligence. And there is a renewed enthusiasm in the role that artificial intelligence can play in solving many of society's greatest challenges. But I think for this audience and this forum today, the thing to remember about that is that for many applications of AI, it is nothing without data. And it is with, and it's nothing without sharing that data. So, you know, for not all AI, but for many data-driven aspects of AI, data is really the, the kind of underlying lifeblood, I would say, that makes those technologies work in practice. And so I think it's, it's never been more important that the kind of approaches and technologies and considerations that have been considered in PFOD over the last four years be brought, be brought to bear and be continued um, to help with this AI revolution that we've found ourselves in now. So with that, I would just again like to welcome everybody to the event today. I'm really looking forward to hearing the panel discussions and the discussion at the end. And, and uh, you know, real, a real pleasure to be here. And I look forward to the conversation and I'll pass you over to Alicia. Thank you very much.